Parr! It's not. That's Parr. <laughs> Vikings blood. They're coming out of primary fermentation into secondary fermentation. Shit like that. <laughs> Welcome to Aussie Homesteading. I'm Troy. And I'm Emily. And today we're going to rack our Vikings blood. Now we're going to um, break this up into four lots today. Yep. Um, we're going to use uh, three five litre um, glass demijohns uh, and then we're going to use, should have about 10 litres left which we're going to put into a, a 10 litre fermentation bucket. So into the largest vessel we're going to do cacao and vanilla. Um, this will be our chalk cherry mead. Yeah. Um, into our first of our smaller vessels, five litres, we're going to do chalk, vanilla and nutmeg. Into the next one, chalk, vanilla and cinnamon. And then into the third, chalk, vanilla, nutmeg and cinnamon. It's starting to try and mix it up a little bit and see bit how, of this, bit yeah, of that. how the mood strikes you. Um, we are very shortly about to get going a plain cherry melamel. Yeah. Um, which half of it we will be bottling as cherry melamel, and then we'll be using the other half to put through the the still the still and making um, a spirit. So, um, which we've never made a spirit with. Um, no, with a, a mead. Cherry mead. Cherry mead, yeah. We've done mead though. We've done mead. But we haven't done cherry mead. So we're going to be putting that through very shortly. Um, so knowing how well our um, chalk cherry mead has gone in the past, we're wanting to make more of the combinations. Yeah. And um, yeah, because. Bit of variety. Yeah. Um, so we're excited to get this going today. We are using. Queen's Organic Vanilla Bean Paste. So uh, one teaspoon is meant to be equal to one pod. Um, and they, you know, you can see the beans in it. So, and it smells quite well. Oh, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, if you've never tried cacao nibs, um, they're worth having a taste of anyway. They're very, it's a very healthy way of having chocolate. So. And I think um, the paleo diets eat these. I yeah. think I've seen that um, in advertising. So it's uh, if you've had the really strong cocoa chocolate blocks. Yeah, like he buys them when he sees them at eighty percent cacao. Yeah, it's like that, but a little bit stronger. Mm. There's no milk or anything else put yeah. into it at all. Now nutmeg wise. Uh, we've just used a um, one and ground it ourselves. So I find that better because I can just um, have it fresh. And these seem to keep store really well. So the beans. So uh, pods actually I think they are. Anyway, whatever. Um, I've already um, ground some up but I've got a feeling I'm going to need more. So we'll work that out when it comes to it. And then we've just got some um, ground cinnamon. And yeah, we're ready to get going. Everything's already sterilised. Yep. Um, ahead of time, as we always do, we've got our bucket of sterilisation down here. We've already sterilised our hands. We are good to go. Right, let's get find out where the gravity is now. When we started it on the 16th of uh, June, 13 days ago, it, the specific gravity reading was 1.09. So a potential alcohol of 12%. So let's see what we're sitting at now. Let me tell you, it smells nice. Let's see what we've got. It's 
So we've got a current reading of 1.036. No, hang on. No, 1.04. And as you know, everything is sterilized, so... Oh, actually, do you want to try it? I'll tip most of it back in, then we'll have a sip. Okay, let me get some molasses. Yeah, we'll try it at this stage first, don't you think? Yeah. Because it's still at this stage a cherry melamel anyway. And each batch will always be slightly different. Um, Depending on the cherry. The honey. Yep. Um, and because we live actually near uh, a lot of cropping, potato farms, vegetable farms, so our bees from our hive are... Picking up pollen from a different A wide places. range of sources. And in it fact... It varies during the year. It does. Through the year when we're harvesting honey and we, you know, we've taste tested with honey that we collected six months ago and then you... Hang on, this one's... This one might be a little bit more blue gummy or this one you can taste... There's been some um, lucerne crops within the yeah. five kilometres from our house, and you can actually taste that little bit of lucerne. So our bees are really tapping into quite a, a variety, a vast variety, and mm. and we can really taste that in our honey sometimes. So it is worth trying even at this stage. Yeah. Cheers. Now, colour wise, I think it's got a reasonable colour. I think not quite as much as I was hoping for. Yes, me too. But I would like to have, to have been a bit darker, but it's not too bad. No. Let's have a taste. Smell wise. Smell wise, strong in alcohol at the moment, the smell. Mm, it is. Oh my god, that's great. That is, how'd you put that? It's sweet at the moment, because it's still got some sugar um, Still got some sugar fermenting to fermenting. do. But There's definite cherry flavour there. Definite cherry flavour. Not so much honey. But I think that's where the sweetness is coming in. You see, I do get a honey taste. But it's the cherry um, hits you first. Yep. Then there's a bit of honey. And then I think as you swallow, you get a bit of cherry again. Mm. I definitely agree. And I think we've got the amount of cherries correct with that. Because that's what we're after, the cherry mm. flavour. Because we the doubled honey. the amount of cherries this time. In yes. our last lot, we only used one 500 gram. So we doubled it. And I yep. do think there is the. Definite. Cherry. It hits you twice. Yes. I definitely. like it. It's good. Okay. So you wanting. Let's start racking it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, when you're putting in your siphon, never let it hit the bottom because you're going to have um, fermentation sitting on the bottom there, which you don't want. And it's only a couple of pumps, and it's and it's off. I don't know if you can see that, but that was one well. one full pump this time. Was it only a pump? Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, so as we were saying before, we got 25 liters. So we should have five, 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 and ten left over, thereabouts, for our tub. Now this was a primary lot, so the cherries are still sitting in there. Yes, the cherries are still sitting in here at the moment. Um, that's why we're racking it out now and putting it into secondary fermentation. Mm -hmm. And if we were just keeping it as a cherry mead, we'd just break it straight off. Now did we explain one. a fruit a mead on its own is just your honey. Yeah. If it's a melamel is any fruits put with honey. Yes. Actually that'd be a nice one. Banana honey um melamel. Yeah we could do that. That's a good idea. That's a, that sounds like a nice one actually. Mm. Um but yeah so at this stage, it's a melamel. Now, at this stage, what we've been talking about putting through um, 
the steel. for distilling is putting through it at this stage. Yes. Although uh, we'd probably let it go another couple of weeks. Oh yeah, we'd let the fermentation finish. Mm. So we'd rack it out at this stage, mm. um, put it into another fermenter, mm. and then let so it finish. That will be coming. Keep tuned for um, various distilling videos that are coming your way. Oh, lots to go. Mm -hmm. Now this one's almost full. So we might come back to you when we've got these um, all we'll wrapped up. up. Yep. yep. Welcome back. We've finished racking the Vikings blood into three demijohns and we've got 10.5 litres in the bucket. Now to put the nibs and so the recipe that we're going to do, um, which is what we used last time when we did this, was one eighth of a cup of chalk nibs into the five litre uh, mix. So um, just a little bit heat to make sure. So there's one in that one. nibs into that one and here's the cocoa nibs into that one so so be quarter of a cup into this one well I think we're going to go quarter and an eighth because it's um, got that extra make it nice a little bit stronger anyway mm. so here's your quarter and let's go in eighth. And there is your eighth. Beautiful. So I better write down what I did in that one. How many litres did you say was in that? 10.5. 10.5 litres. And on the chalk nibs we did one, whoops, my pen's not working. One quarter cup plus one eighth of a cup. Okay, great. Now, nutmeg wise, into this one here, we'll go nutmeg and we'll call it a teaspoon. Okay, so just before we get them mixed up, very important, this is Ladies. our chalk nutmeg sticker, and I've written on there. The date that we're putting it into second fermentation and the ABV for today as well as when it started its primary fermentation and the ABV and just a quick ingredients list. So this one is clearly stated um, chalk vanilla nutmeg but I haven't put the vanilla in yet so that's what we're going to do next. Oh, we'll put the vanillas in at the end. Let's yep. just go through with the spices. So the other one that's going to have cinnamon in is, I mean nutmeg that was nutmeg. The next one that's going to have nutmeg is the one that's going to have cinnamon, nutmeg and vanilla. So let's put in our teaspoon into that one. So let's go, that was the one with the lot, right? Yep. That's that sticker here. Okay, and then none of these are also having nutmeg. So that's it for nutmeg. Now I'll put cinnamon in this one. Yep. So cinnamon is going to be half a teaspoon, right? Yep. Half a teaspoon. And this one's having cinnamon. Yep. So half a teaspoon. And let's put our sticker on for that one, which is that one there is the one with the lock. So. I will also whack on our, oh no, we haven't worked out, into that one isn't, the big fermentation bucket isn't having anything else than what's in it apart from vanilla, right? That's correct. So let's just put our stick on. Okay, now vanilla wise, we need to do, I'm just going to clean this, we need to do, and then I'm just going to quickly sterilise, we need to do, um, 
one each of these will have one teaspoon of vanilla, which is equal to one pod. Yep. Um, and that how one much will do have you want in Just add two and a two and a bit. Okay, so each one of these is gonna have one teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm just heaping it because there's always going to be a little bit left in the spoon. I've oversized it. We'll mix the rest of that out into this tub. Mm -hmm. So, how many do you want in that one? Two. You'd Two actually... and a little bit. So what, two and a half? Yeah. One. Two. And there's your half. And I'll give it a good clean out mix. Because it's sterilized, we can do that. This one a bit of a good mix. Now what some bun was doing. Yes, please. Okay. Give these all a mix. Yep. to do mine because I would not dare oh that wasn't me I swear this often happens from primary into secondary because there's still so much fermentation and gas going on um, you'll you'll end up with a um, I'll just make sure that all that chocolate and everything is wet yep now, I'm going to do that this one, last yes, one. if you don't mind. Um, I might just get the mixer for this. Making sure that all of our chocolate has been wet. Now, lid on. Mm -hmm. Well, you can make sure that's. I'll make sure that's down. And. As they've been soaking in the sterilising solution, they've got way too much sterilising solution in them. Just tipping some out, that'll do. And nicely sterilised. Now I like to put these lids on tight on the tubs. Otherwise, I feel that the breather is not being used properly if you don't and you can't see if it's still bubbling away now we always use um what are they air vent things what are they actually called fermenting vents vents they're bubblers um no no you call them bubblers but what's the actual name you know <laughs> Oh, anyway, some people um, say use a balloon and that's okay. Or they may use a piece of cheesecloth and say, you know what, that's okay. But, um, no. Whereas it's a few dollars. And, uh, they're reusable. Yeah. Some of these um, have been on the go for like 10 years. 
That's right. Especially, oh, the first ones you ever bought. I swear we had one. There was one around here. Oh, I know what it was. It was, you, it was when you did the orange wine. Yes. That one, Troy has had maybe 15 years. Yeah. And it's still going. Um, that was one of the original ones that he got. You look after it mm -hmm. and they uh, keep on going. And it's done innumerable brews. That's you couldn't right. even count. It's been years and years worth of brewing. Um, so they're well and truly worth their money. That's it, exactly. And when you think about a balloon, what does a balloon cost you? 10 cents or 20 cents? And how many do you get out of it? One, One use. Birth. Well, yeah, and it's useless anyway, because the whole point is, it's not just allowing air to escape, it's preventing anything from getting in, so... That's right. All right no matter what, this is the best option. And that's, that's our recommendation. Are we forgetting anything? I do not know. But if we're not, ask in the comments. If there's something that you want to know that we haven't covered, please ask in the comments below. And please subscribe and like, and we'll be bottling these in... Hmm. At but least three weeks. At but least three in weeks. truth, once things go into the secondary fermentation, you could leave them in here for six months. It's not a big deal. No, that's right. They're basically primed and prepped and ready to go. Like, some people do leave. Like, I know my grandfather, I used to watch him make wine when I was a kid, and he would, once he went into secondary fermentation, he would leave it there, and that's where it would sit. Yeah. So, um, and then he would bottle. So, and I reckon at least a good six months, he would leave them in there. So, for us though, we don't have innumerable um, fermentation vessels like he did. Like no. my grandfather, my God, he, he had beyond. So many. He had clay ones, all sorts of ones. Um, and the point is, we want those containers. So we'll probably be looking at three to four weeks and we'll probably bottle them and then they can do their long ferment. Well, we're going to try and get... No, we guarantee we're going to get a, out of each bottle um, mix that we've made, we're going to do keep one aside for opening at a month, opening at three months, opening at six months and opening at 12 months. Yeah. Um, the rest we can't guarantee what happens to them. No, not at all. But these are starting to bubble oh, away starting nicely. To bubble, yeah. So the only reason we end up bottling maybe in three to four weeks is purely because we want our vessels ready That's right. so we can move on to something else. Um, but yeah, if you have the the vessels, by all means, set them in here for six months and then bottle. It's up to you. So. Yeah, we'll call that it, and we will see you in the next video regarding our uh, Vikings Blood Cherry Mana mixes. Oh, we've got a big storm happening outside. Very exciting. This Definitely. is Australia's winter. Oh, the windows are rattling. Woo. <laughs> okay. So we'll see you for tonight. Yep. See you. Catch you around.